Good morning, this is Dr. Rutledge, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the mini gastric bypass and its mechanism of action and some new research. And uh, in a funny, unusual way, I'd like to give you the equivalent of a $10,000 a year drug for free. And so that's part of what we'll talk about. We'll also talk about drug addiction and a few other things, but um, uh, let's get started. Uh, so uh, many people that I find uh, can have trouble with their MGB. And I use this example, which is a little bit facetious, but I say, imagine that someone goes to buy a car and uh, they get it home. It's an expensive, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes or something like that, or a, um, a new Tesla or something. And they call the dealer and they're very upset and angry because the results are bad. They've had numerous crashes, the car is not working well, and uh, the owner, the new owner is very upset. And so uh, the dealer is uh, apologetic and also upset and says, please bring the car in, let's see if we can uh, make this right. So the, the new owner brings the car in and uh, the rear end is all smashed up and uh, the salesperson says, well, let's take it for a drive and see if we can figure out what's going on. And so they take it out for a drive and of course, in my silly example, as soon as they drive out of the lot, the uh, salesperson realizes that the new owner is driving the car backwards. And I wanna talk about that analogy for the MGB. So the idea is that uh, if we were to talk to most people who are overweight or diabetic or suffering from the other obesity related or metabolic diseases, they kind of know what they should do. You know, in other words, it's not rocket science to say, eat healthy, get up and exercise, get regular sleep and things like that. That's pretty simple. The reason that they are risking their lives with a major surgery in general is because of one thing. They're not able to do it or they have tried it and been successful for a brief period of time and then failed subsequently. And so they're coming to us with the idea that the MGB will fix their inability to follow what they kind of know intellectually is the right thing to do. Now, uh, what we would like is magic. What we would like is magic so that like, uh, if you were a parent growing a new child, what you would like is for that person to grow up as a young man or young woman and be bright and intelligent and obedient and kind to others and all those things. But those of you who've had children know that occasionally they're imperfect. <laughs> or a puppy dog, they're occasionally imperfect. And so in your attempts to train a puppy dog or a person or a child or a spouse um, to perform things in the right way, what you'd like to do is just be able to explain it to them once and that would be the end of it. You know, pick up your clothes, put your socks in the dirty clothes basket, uh, flush the toilet, uh, <laughs> things like that. And that should be the end of it. It turns out that the MGB is somewhat like that parent or the owner of a new puppy dog. And what the MGB would like to do is realize that you have choices, but what we'd like to do as an MGB is encourage you to eat healthy foods and discourage you from eating in a poor way selecting bad foods, as well as a variety of other behaviors. And I'll mention them such as eating late at night, eating rapidly, eating too much, skipping breakfast. There's a whole list of these things, which I'll do in another presentation. But many of these things that the MGB is trying to get you to do, you should do, and many people know it, but they still violate that principle. They still go ahead and they say to themselves, I'm not really thinking about that at the present time. I'm on the television. I'm watching the uh, football game. I'm doing something else. And so the idea that's in their mind that they should eat uh, something light and healthy gets blocked out by a candy bar, a Big Mac, uh, an Egg McMuffin or something else, which is high calorie, high fat or highly processed junk food. Now, what's a mother to do? What's a father or a parent or a drug owner or drug owner, 
a dog owner, what are we supposed to do about that? Well, the MGB is designed intentionally based on a hundred years of data to say, no. If you drive the car backwards, we're going to interfere with that in a negative way. And this is called aversive conditioning. In other words, we're potentially gonna hurt you, make it uncomfortable, make it unpleasant with the goal of being a good parent. In other words, we don't wanna do it in a harmful, hurtful way, but a child who doesn't understand that or a puppy who doesn't understand that can constantly get in trouble. So what we wanna do is give you today some ground rules, explain why you wanna to listen to the MGB, why if you're having unusual complaints or problems with the MGB, it may in fact be simply that you're driving the car backwards, that you don't know that the puppy dog owner just doesn't want the puppy dog to poop on the carpet in the house, doesn't want the young child to be playing with the electrical plugs that go to the refrigerator or sticking his hand in the fire. The goal of our MGB is that it's more effective in causing long-term weight loss and resolving diabetes because it's better at guiding our patients. But sometimes the guide, the parent in this analogy can be strict. And that's when people get confused because they constantly are doing something and they're not understanding the basic component of the MGB. And we're gonna talk about some of the components of the MGB today. And we'll begin that by talking about how the MGB is made and why it's different, for example, from the sleeve, from the lap band, from the Roux and Y gastric bypass and some of the others and why it's made differently and then how that affects you. So we've got a little bit to talk about, but I hope you'll find this interesting. The other thing is that uh, we'll try and talk about a lot of things today, but I can't go into enough detail because the video will be too long. And we also don't know about your individual issues. If you're having trouble from your MGB, you could, for example, be having a complication. Maybe you've got an ulcer or maybe you've had a perforation from aspirins or something like that. Maybe you have appendicitis or gallbladder disease or cancer, who knows? So these things are hard to deal with in a brief little video. So my suggestion is if you have problems and they don't get taken care of easily after listening to this video, feel free to call me. And uh, just to let you know, my email address is really simple. It's DRR, that's Dr. R, at C as in cat, L O S as in Sam.net. So that's D R R at C L O S.net. Email me anytime. And I'm usually available on Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and a variety of other social media sites. And I'd be happy to try and help you if this simple presentation doesn't take care of the problem. So let's imagine how we make the MGB. Well, first of all, we make a new stomach. And a lot of people get confused about the stomach with the MGB and they say, oh, it needs to be small and narrow and quote, restricted. No, 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 no. I have a patient from Israel and she's calling me, says something's wrong with my MGB. It's not restrictive. I said, yeah, that's because the MGB pouch is not restrictive. And so she and others frequently don't understand why the MGB was not made like the lap band, the sleeve, and the old operation called the vertical banded gastroplasty. So let's talk a little bit about that. What are we talking about here? We're talking about that a theory that led hundreds of thousands of surgeons and patients to get operations that have been very mixed in their results. The vertical banded gastroplasty made a tight, narrow band and a tight, narrow pouch. And I did almost 400 of those and uh, they had short-term effectiveness like the band and the sleeve, but have relatively high failure rates. And of course the sleeve is really popular now and it's a pretty good operation, but depending on who you read, Dr. Prager, I think in Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic um, has written, I think up to 50% of all of his sleeves are requiring revision because they fail. Well, that's not really an ideal operation. If you look at my 20 year results, you can talk to patients online right now who had surgery with me back in the year 2000. <laughs> um, and they're doing great with their MGB. Um, now it's not perfect, but uh, 
the idea of the MGB with its new stomach pouch is not like the lap band and not like the sleeve and not like the old vertical band of gastroplasty. And so let's see if I can explain that for a few minutes. The theory behind the vertical band of gastroplasty, the theory behind the lap band and the theory behind the sleeve is just as simple as could be. You have a lot of stuff traveling down a road and it's too much. So we'll just put a roadblock in. We'll make it narrow and obstructive. That's restrictive. And so when you try to eat a lot with a lap band, it's partially blocked and you can eat less and you get weight loss. And that works the same way with the sleeve and the vertical band of gastroplasty. But what happens in this analogy of training the puppy is you actually train the puppy by mistake in this kind of silly example to not go to the bathroom outside, but they make a mess on the carpet inside. What I mean by that is when we teach someone that they're going to have trouble eating certain kinds of foods, then they tend to avoid that. So for example, when I talk to failed sleep patients, when they call to ask about having their revisions, they often say, when I talk to them, that they could eat an apple, but it's very difficult. And when I press them on the point, they rarely eat apples because an apple is relatively bulky. And when you try to swallow it, it doesn't go easily through the blockage, the band or the sleeve or the VVG. Similarly, broccoli, rarely eaten, although it's possible if you really slow down, um, or a big sandwich. So for all these reasons, when I talk to failed sleep patients, they reasonably have trouble eating those kinds of foods. And I could mention a dozen other examples. On the other hand, I ask them if you could drink a Coke, have an ice cream, or have a candy bar. They often tell me that they shouldn't, but it's very easy to eat those kinds of foods. So that the restriction of a sleeve and a band and a vertical band of gastroplasty often is counterproductive in my experience with people who fail that operation. They fail it because basically they're being taught not to go outside to do their business, but to do it indoors. And what I mean by that simply is they eat a lot of junk food. So for example, potato chips, um, and other foods that are easily gotten through the obstruction. And a lot of healthy foods that would be good, low calorie, high fiber choices are not eaten. And for example, they try to get away with that with uh, protein powders and things like that, which I don't advocate. Um, and so they have trouble. That the technique of putting a roadblock in place for more than 50 years has been a failure. And it looks like even the sleeve, although it's pretty good, has a very high failure rate. Now, the MGB has a, a partially narrowed stomach, but most people get confused because remember that above the stomach, we have the esophagus. And the esophagus in people, vegetarians or others, can easily eat broccoli, apples, oranges, and other bulky foods. So as long as you make the new stomach in the MGB wide enough so that it can accept all the food that goes through the esophagus, you won't have any blockage. And we don't want blockage because we like patients eating broccoli. We like patients eating oranges and apples and sandwiches and things like that. So our stomach pouch is confused by surgeons, unfortunately, and by patients thinking, oh, we need to make it tight and narrow. And we don't want that. That's been tried for over 50 years. It doesn't work very well. It teaches people, it teaches the puppy dog, the young boy, or in our analogy, to eat more junk food. For example, potato chips, crackers, and other highly processed junk food. So breakfast cereal, milk, cheese, all those things go easily through the roadblock. And that's not what we want. So we recommend that the new stomach pouch of the MGB be roughly equivalent to the esophagus or slightly larger. So you might say, well, without that, you won't have restriction. Well, stay with me. 
Because the next thing we do is we disconnect the stomach from its normal route into the bottom of the stomach and down into the duodenum, and we connect it to the side of the intestine. And now here's where the magic happens and several things happen. So what we want to do is allow patients to eat the way we would like. The way we would like to eat in summary, and I can't do too much time on this because we have so much to talk about, but basically what we'd like our MGB patient to do is eat six small meals a day, and we'd like to eat him, have him or her eat generally healthy food. So fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, whole uh, healthy vegetable soups, nuts, berries, things like that, and rarely, if ever, eat much in the way of meat, dairy, or eggs. And uh, we can go into that in more detail, and we certainly don't think people have to become strict, strict vegetarians or vegans. But what we do think is that most of those foods, fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, things like that, are all extremely low calorie. So you can eat as much as you want, and you're very healthy in many series. They've been shown that those people who eat mostly those foods are healthier than people who don't. So we like all those things in a certain way, okay? Now, <clears throat> those things work very well for the new MGB stomach and the new connection between the stomach and the bowel. So eat that way, happy patient, happy wife, happy life, okay? That's all you have to do, it's that simple. Now, a lot of people though have grown up with what we would call addictions. You know, in other words, most people know like a McDonald's hamburger with cheese isn't really a healthy choice. That white flour, burger, the cheese, the grilled meat from Argentina, ground beef, which includes a variety of things maybe wouldn't be so tasty if you actually looked them up and read about them. The French fries with fried fat, a potato, a fairly healthy vegetable on its own, has been converted into a processed poison, I would say. So although healthy foods make the patient happy, the surgeon happy, pa patient's family happy, what we see is patients start to eat foods that cause trouble, and we'd like to explain that now. The way we'd like to think about the MGB is somewhat like a loving grandparent who's very strict and crotchety and old. And when you violate the principles of the MGB, when you eat badly, the old grandma, old grandfather comes down and a little too forcefully punishes the child for eating badly. And so what we'd like to say is maybe the grandparent is a little too harsh, but we must love them because they're trying to keep our best interests in the front. And what do I mean by that? Well, I would like to talk to you about three principles. One is type one dumping, the other is type two dumping, and the third principle is fat digestion in the gut. So um, I, as you may know, I'm not a big believer in keto. <laughs> and I summarize keto as the, the idea that if we eat more fat, we'll lose fat. And so I ask my patients when they talk to me about that, I said, I don't really understand the diet. Can you explain it to me? I said, so when you eat more fat, you'll lose fat. And they go, yeah. I said, so when you eat more fat, you'll lose fat. And they go, yeah. So I said, when you eat more fat, you're going to lose fat. And they go, yeah. I said, and anywhere on earth, are there any, you know, groups of people that are eating more fat and getting thinner? And they said, well, no, because of the carbs. I said, okay. Um, my bias is animal studies, human studies all show if you eat more fat, most people, I think 99.99% of people get fat. -er. And so what we'd like to say is imagine that we were creating the MGB with an eye to decreasing the amount of fat you can absorb. So if you violate our principles, you know, there's not much fat in an apple. So my principles I gave you at the beginning here, I said eat mostly fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and things like that. So if you did that, you may know if you looked up the fat content of fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grain, the fat content's low. So if you were to eat like that, you wouldn't have much fat and you wouldn't have much need to absorb fat that gets put in the gut. 
Well, it turns out that the way the body is constructed, greater than 90% of all the fat digestion and absorption occurs in the first six feet of the bowel. Now, if you know anything about me and the MGB, that first six feet should ring a bell. <laughs> in my 6,000 patients of MGBs I did before I started traveling and teaching MGB, the distance we bypassed routinely was around six feet. Why? Wait for it. We would like to digest and absorb less fat because my theory, wild as it is, is if you digest and absorb less fat, well, what might happen? you might lose some fat. <laughs> so uh, that's why it's built that way. So the first six feet is called the jejunum. We bypass in most of my patients six feet. And in that case, those patients long-term, and now you can talk directly with 15, 10, 15, and 20 year MGB patients of mine online today on Facebook. And what we find is they're doing great and they've lost a lot of fat and can't remain healthy. So step number one is we bypass the upper gut because that's where fat is absorbed. And there, there's now like a sassy operation so you can let some of the food go down there so you can get a little bit more fat digestion, which sounds all right to me, but generally we bypass the upper gut and you digest and absorb less fat. So that's number one. Simple. No roadblock, nothing, nothing blocking anything, just that uh, you can't digest and absorb much fat. Now, that has consequences if you go against grandma and grandpa and your parents. If you start eating fat and you can't digest it, bad things happen. And we'll come back and talk about that. All right, next. What is type one dumping? Okay. If you think about it, what the MGB... And what my guidance says is eat small meals, okay? Let's imagine that when you were obese, when you're diabetic and when you were sick, that sometimes you violated that principle. So you sat down for a turkey dinner at Thanksgiving and instead of eating one cup of food, you ate 10 gallons. <laughs> Obviously I'm exaggerating, but if you eat a lot of food, and you have a Bill Roth II connection of the MGB, you're gonna get what's called type one dumping. So when that food gets transported quickly from the stomach and the new stomach pouch into the small bowel, it acts like a dry sponge. So once it comes into the intestine, it begins sucking in water and it expands and it expands so rapidly that if you've eaten a lot fast, you get unbelievably crippling, severe, piercing, devastating abdominal pain and nausea. So again, you could criticize grandma and grandpa for coming down and being too harsh with the children, but what the MGB is designed to do with aversive conditioning is if you violate that basic principle of eating too fast, eating too much, eating the wrong kinds of food, you're likely to get type one dumping. And that's no fun, okay? Now, if you eat healthy, six meals a day, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, things like that, Happy life, happy wife, everything is good, yeah? Now, that's type one dumping. Type two dumping is, let's suppose, instead of eating a big turkey Thanksgiving dinner, instead you had a Coke. Nothing wrong with having a Coke, is there? Well, it, nothing wrong in the old stomach because the old stomach had an outlet valve called the pylorus and it would recognize sugar and it would stay closed and open the valve out of the stomach slowly over time. And the pancreas would say, here's a little sugar here, I'll give some insulin. Now, it turns out with uh, the MGB, you get what's called type two dumping. And so the sugar comes out, it comes out fast. And so the pancreas says, oh my goodness, there's more, much more sugar coming. I better secrete maybe 10 times as much insulin is necessary for this actual sugar. I'm confused because of the new connection. And this is called type two dumping. And when that happens, when that misregulation of the pancreas of understanding how much insulin is needed happens, you can get an overshoot of insulin, which means then you get an undershoot of the glucose because insulin takes the glucose out of the bloodstream. 
And all of a sudden, you have hypoglycemia, you can pass out, you can be sick and sweaty and anxious. And again, grandma or grandpa come down and they punish you. Now, we don't like that, but we're hoping that we can protect you from the dangers and the deadly complications of diabetes and heart disease, et cetera, by with this aversive event saying, warning, do not eat a whole bunch of sugar fast. So ice cream, candy, junk food like Coca-Cola, artificial sweeteners, do this. And we're trying to tell you, even though I cannot be with my 6,000 people that I operated on, I can be teaching them forever afterwards. I am there with you, low until the end of time. The MGB will be upset, angry, and punish you if you drink a Coke rapidly. Now, there are ways to get around this, but it's difficult. And so the idea then is that if we have these features in place, that generally patients over 5, 10, 15, and 20 years now have had good results. Now, another issue you might not think about is let's imagine that you think you've got a bushel basket of space and you go to the grocery store and you fill your bushel basket up. Well, that's fine. But let's imagine instead you go to the store and you ask for, um, let's say, a couple of liters of water or wine or orange juice. Okay, And you brought with you a one liter or one quart bottle. What's going to happen? Well, that fluid or food will start coming backwards. And that's what happens if you eat too much. The MGB is designed to punish you if you eat too much food too fast. So that's called reflux. Now, many people say, oh my goodness, I have terrible reflux. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the owner. <laughs> you could say there's something wrong. The puppy keeps pooping in the house. Well, in this case, the MGB is designed to accept a half a cup of food. If you violate these principles and say, I'm going to eat uh, four cups, <laughs> reflux is common, especially if you drink four cups and then lay down, <laughs> which a lot of people do. And we, it's not laughing matter because it should be really simple to understand. And so if you modify your diet and eat healthy, these kinds of things will not go wrong. And sometimes it's more complex than I've described it here. So again, if these simple tips and pointers don't help you, please feel free to call me anytime. I'd be happy to discuss it with you and give you some guidance and see if we can't fix your problems with the MGB. Um, in addition, if you have reflux problems with a lap band or a sleeve, be happy to discuss that with you as well, because there are some tips and tricks that we can offer for you. Um, if you're interested in having MGB surgery with me, uh, feel free to email me or call me. And we're now offering surgery with my partner in uh, Mexico, Dr. Elon at uh, Hospital BC. And uh, thanks for listening. And we'll be in touch with you again soon with a more detailed uh, video on some of the topics we didn't get to on today's. Thanks a lot.